Hi everyone, in this video I'll be demonstrating a simple toolkit for creating core progressions that not only evoke the emotions you want to convey, but also naturally inspire great melodies, fueling your songwriting process. If you often feel stuck in frustration and dissatisfaction with your melodic ideas, it might be due to uninspiring chords. We'll explore why, and I'll provide many practical chord progression examples for you to use or draw inspiration from. This video is primarily beginner-friendly with occasional advanced tips, and it doesn't require advanced music theory knowledge. The insights I'll share apply to all genres and can reignite your creativity if it's feeling a bit dry. All right, let's kick this off by asking a simple question. What's the deal with inspiring chord progressions versus the dull and uninspiring ones. Well, it's not about loading up your progression with a bunch of fancy, complex chords. It's about nailing the perfect blend of tension, release, and surprise. This essential balance keeps the progression flowing smoothly from tension to release and so on. So you might ask, how does this relate to creating catchy melodies though? Now, here's the key. Whether you like it or not, the melody is tightly bound to the chords, as they significantly influence the melodic options we can have. Having a melody that disregards the chords and goes in its own separate direction leads to an unpleasing, unmusical result. So with chords and melody being tightly bound together, it's obvious that if the chord progression lacks the right blend of tension, release and surprise, the melody is likely to not have it either. Given what I've just said, our first goal when creating a chord progression is to ensure that it is well balanced. Let's kick things off with a practical example to explain how we can achieve that. Imagine we have a somewhat melancholic chord progression like this. The first question we should ask ourselves is, does this chord progression carry the right mix of tension, release, and surprise? Well, this could be surely a good starting point for a progression, but I feel it's a bit dull as it stands. There's a general lack of tension and surprise in it, don't you think? Let's see what happens with one more chord added. See what happened? By introducing E minor, I not only injected a sense of surprise, but also heightened the tension. This in turn enhances the feeling of resolution when we return to A minor, while the D minor becomes an interesting variation between E minor, the peak of tension, and A minor, the peak of resolution. Now, this was a super simple example, but the idea here is to start with a few chords, analyze the progression, and evaluate whether tension, release, and surprise is lacking or not. So, after doing that, you might be wondering, how do I determine which chord to use to enhance tension, release, and our surprise? Well, the answer lies in a fundamental music theory concept. Every song is composed in a specific key and each key comprises seven notes. Music theory guides us in constructing one chord on each of these seven notes, and indicates whether each chord should be major or minor. In simpler terms, we typically have seven different chords to work with in our song. While some songs may be more complex, I would say these chords cover 90% of the songs you probably listen to. The beauty of the system is that each chord conveys a distinct sensation. Some create tension, some offer release, and others fall somewhere in between, neither fully stable nor unstable. This makes them good choices for introducing an element of surprise when needed. Here are the general sensations typically associated with these chords. For now, referencing this chart is fine. But the magic unfolds when you can deeply feel and imagine each chord sound in your head. I'll explain more about this topic later in this video. Now, let's explore a few more examples. This is a 
a happy and bright chord progression, but I would say it lacks an element of surprise. So let's see how it sounds with an additional chord. Much more balanced, right? Here is one last example, real quick. It feels like it's going nowhere, doesn't it? Guess the missing element and share your thoughts in the comments before I reveal it. Now, here's the improved chord progression. The missing element was resolution. Now, are these the only techniques available to create more inspiring chord progressions? Of course not. There's much more to explore. However, it's crucial to ensure that your chord progressions are well balanced and flow smoothly before delving into the next set of ideas on how to make them even more inspiring. The next chord tool in our toolkit can transform your chord progression from plain to emotional and even dramatic, if you wish. I'll start with an example and then break down what I've done. Let's begin with this basic chord progression. Now, here is its more inspiring counterpart. So what changes did I make? I introduced chords that go beyond simple triads, such as adding the ninth to the A minor chord and turning a C chord into a C sus4 chord. This results in the following chord progression. There are a few reasons why this progression feels more inspiring than the previous one. First, the addition of the add ninth and sus4 chord creates variety and introduces an element of surprise. Another reason is that adding the ninth to an A minor chord adds drama, making the A minor chord much darker. There's one more significant reason, but we'll explore that later in the video. It's quite interesting, so be sure to stick around until the end. You can apply the concept of using other chords than simple triads in various ways. I've only scratched the surface here. For example, you can experiment with suspended chords, chords with added ninth or sixth notes, or even seventh chords. Delving deeper into this topic would require a dedicated video, but let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a video like that. The next tool can do wonders for inspiration. Maybe you've already heard about chord inversions. If you have, stick around to learn how you can use them to help with your melodies. If you haven't, it's quite simple. I'll explain it in 15 seconds. A chord inversion occurs when the lowest note of the chord is not the same as the root note. Let's take C major as an example. It consists of the notes C, E, and G. Typically, we play it with C as the lowest note, which is our standard C major chord. However, we can also play it like this, with G in the bass. This is a chord inversion of C major. Chord inversions offer us the option to add more variety to our progressions. Instead of always using chords in root position, we can use inversions to introduce diversity and enhance the element of surprise. For example, take a look at this chord progression. Now, here's a more interesting version of it. All I've done is transform this into an inversion. But that's just the beginning. Chord inversions pave the way for a tool that can elevate average progressions into highly inspiring ones and bring unexpected catchy melodies to life. For example, in the case of the previous chord progression, 
What makes it interesting is that thanks to the chord inversion, I've achieved stepwise motion in the bass line. Essentially, the bass line now descends the scale step by step. This way, the bass line feels more like its own melodic line, instead of jumping around like this. This alone enhances the progression's appeal. But we can extend this concept to other chord voices, not just the bass line. Remember the chord progression I played earlier? Part of what makes this progression inspiring isn't just the use of sus4 and at ninth chords. It's also the fact that in the last three chords, only one note changes from one chord to the next. For the sake of this video, we can refer to it as smooth voice movement, meaning the next chord is played by selecting the closest notes to the previous one. Voice in this context means note of the chord. Chord inversions are the devices that allow us to achieve smooth voice movement between chords, creating the sense of multiple melodic lines moving together to form the chord. rather than multiple chord blocks moving like synchronized, stomping military boots. This is already more inspiring because each voice's melodic movement within the chord can spark creative melodic ideas on its own. But we can take it further by creating bits of melodic ideas within the chord progression itself when transitioning from one chord to the next. Isn't that much more inspiring than this? You can essentially think of each voice in the chord as its own melodic line. Let's apply this concept on the guitar as well. The reason why these embellishments are inspiring and can spark melodic ideas is not only because they provide melodic lines that your ear can latch onto and develop further, but also because they introduce additional rhythmic movement within the chord progression itself, which can trigger interesting melodic ideas. Rhythm is a crucial component of great melodies. It's the backbone of a memorable tune. For this exact same reason, if you're using a DAW to compose songs, which I highly recommend, I encourage you to build upon the concept I just shared in a slightly different way. Let's say you have a synth pad playing the basic triad chords. Instead of making major alterations to the synth pad part in an attempt to achieve smooth voice movement, you can leave that as it is and introduce an additional instrument designed to play subtle melodic loops. These melodic ideas are meant to stay in the background, complement the chord progression, and infuse interest and movement into the arrangement. They don't have to be overly catchy, though. This approach serves the same purpose as treating each voice in the chord progression as a melodic line, as we discussed earlier. It's possibly even more potent and can truly transform an ordinary, common chord progression into an inspiring instrumental piece that can spark fantastic, catchy melodies almost effortlessly. Rhythm, as we've just seen, plays a crucial role in either inspiring catchy melodies are producing boring ones. This is why it's another essential element in our toolkit. And with rhythm also goes dynamics. Consider this chord progression. Sure, we can change the tempo, but let's explore something as simple yet less obvious, altering the duration of the chords. Try this. No 
notice how it adds a lively jumping feel? Now, let's experiment with dynamics. These are just a few possibilities. They can transform an average progression into one that can inspire intriguing melodic ideas. As we've seen, rhythmic cues play a significant role in inspiring catchy melodies. Are you interested in more ideas on using rhythm and dynamics? Let me know in the comments and I'll consider a separate video on the topic. Our next tool is a tiny bit more advanced, but trust me, it can be a game changer and you'll pick it up effortlessly. Let's jump right into an example to illustrate the concept. Here is our initial chord progression. Pretty standard, right? Now let's add an element that introduces extra tension and surprise. Can you feel the added intrigue and excitement brought by this new element? This was the same chord progression you'll find in Pharrell Williams' song, Happy. In the last chord of the progression, instead of the regular E minor, which is the typical sixth degree chord in the key of G major, we've switched to the E seventh. Now, E seventh doesn't belong to the G major scale, and in this context, it's referred to as a secondary dominant chord. Wondering what a secondary dominant is? I'll break it down for you. In a key, as we've discussed, there are seven chords. Typically, only the fifth degree of the key can be a dominant seventh chord, known for its tension and tendency to resolve. However, by applying a music theory rule, we can turn any of the remaining six chords within the key into dominant seventh chords, thereby making them secondary dominants. The key takeaway here is that introducing a secondary dominant chord adds extra tension to our progression, which naturally resolves to the chord a fourth above it. So how do secondary dominants help us create catchier melodies? The introduction of a secondary dominant chord introduces non-diatonic notes, which are notes outside the established key and wouldn't be available for use in our melody otherwise. For instance, in the chord progression I've just played, a G sharp is introduced by the E seventh chord. Incorporating that G sharp into our melody can inspire unexpected and unique melodic ideas. And that note wouldn't sound good at all if we had the regular E minor chord instead of the E seventh in the accompaniment. Great, there's one final tip left. Spoiler, it's a holistic one. But before we get to that, Check out this song idea where I've mixed in all the cool tools we've covered. Alright, here's the final tip. What we've explored is a toolkit for crafting emotionally charged chord progressions that naturally inspire great melodies. It's practical and straightforward to implement. However, the method I've introduced is analytical, requiring conscious thought and assessment. While this makes it user-friendly, it can sometimes hinder spontaneous creativity. What if I told you there's a much more engaging, efficient, and fun approach to composing chords and melodies. Imagine transforming your songwriting process from the slow, painstaking task of piecing together sentences in a foreign language to the fluidity and ease of expressing yourself in your native tongue. You know, the most rewarding moments in songwriting, whether solo or collaboratively, occur when ideas emerge effortlessly when you're deeply immersed in the realm of sound and emotion. 
you anticipate the next chord sound driven by the emotion you wish to express. And like magic, it reveals itself in your mind. While this intuitive approach applies to chords, it's even more vital for creating exceptional melodies. The ability to write songs intuitively is the hallmark of legendary composers and songwriters. You might think that's easy for them, they're naturally gifted, but I can't do that. However, after helping more than 2,000 students developing their musicality and witnessing unbelievable transformations, I'm here to challenge that notion. Music is a language of sensations, feelings, and emotions. We've seen how each chord conveys a different feeling, haven't we? You, just like anyone else, have the ability to internalize this emotional language of music and make it as a second nature to you as it is to the greats. This is done through ear training, and that's where the use your ear method comes in. It's a method I've developed after years of frustration with conventional ear training techniques. It's the only scientifically backed approach available, uniquely tailored to develop intuitive ear training skills that pave the way for intuitive songwriting. If you've tried ear training in the past, just know that this method is unique and it's much more effective than any other ear training approach out there. Indeed, it's currently rated excellent on Trustpilot with a 4.5 out of 5 score by our students. So if you want to move beyond overthinking each step in your songwriting and allow your natural creativity to flow freely for shockingly better results, unlocking your inner sense of musicality is the next essential step. Watch this video to learn the do's and don'ts of making it happen. Otherwise, you might miss a great opportunity to add enjoyment and spontaneity into your songwriting.